if we're not careful, this is the world that we're in. It can be taken from us, can be stolen from us. It can be, you know, but if we were to switch and go, well, what happens if we do engage with it? What happens to our life? What happens to our career? If we do make the time for it, if we invest in it, if we be courageous with it, if we uh, tend to the garden, so to speak, Mm. oh my goodness, the opportunities, James. I want to start. I want to start with. There was this little uh, statistic. So I, I did maths at uni. I'm a very sort of that way inclined. Two plus two. <laughs> yeah, four. <laughs> yeah, five. <laughs> no. Um, well, so I, you know, I love a great stat, and so I was. Um, I'm deep in the book, and there was this one stat, and I'm not. You, you may recall this, but they were doing this experiment about creativity in sort of children and how. Mm. It, kind of goes um, through their life and, and and sort of measuring the creativity at different points. And it, I've got it written here, so I'm just going to repeat kind of what's in the book. But so 98% of five-year-olds, mm-hmm. 98% classed as creative geniuses. Mm-hmm. And then this number drops down to 2% by the time these people, the same people got to 30, mm-hmm. um, which was pretty insane to me how that could happen because uh, presumably it happens to pretty much all of us. So... Yeah, I'd love to sort of kick off. And I know this is a big theme of yours is creativity in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and uh, I mean, what do you think are the reasons why that uh, something like this happens to people as we as we get older? Look around. Look at look at the way we work. Look at the way that we consume information. Look at the way, you know, we're at the tail end of the Industrial Revolution. We are we have been shaped and influenced heavily and consistently um, for decades. And so that piece of research is a guy called George Land who um, he, he devised one of the first ever creativity tests for NASA back in the day to get to get us to the moon. And um, that test, you know, helped them find the, the most creative minds on the planet. And he thought a few years after that, oh, this is successful. Why don't I try it with a bunch of five-year-olds? And mm-hmm. then the results came back 98% of people, roughly speaking, generally speaking, are born with this creative capacity. And then over time, when they get to 10, it drops to 30. When they're 15, it drops to 12. When they're 30, they're living in the suburbs. They've got jobs and kids of their own. It's roughly 2%. And the, and mm. the culmination of that research, George famously said, the research is conclusive, non-creative behavior is learned. So what he means by that is we're taught out of our creativity. We're influenced, we're conditioned out of a natural state. And, then, and it's not a bad thing. I'm not throwing shade at the education system. We're not trying to make anybody wrong for this. It's just that the principles that we valued or the, the principles that have driven uh, most of modern society where we've got to today have prioritised you know, rational, linear, logical, pragmatic, optimization, efficiency, productivity, growth at all cost, extraction, exploitation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera much like a factory line, much like, mm. um, yeah, you know, an industrial, how you produce products. You want to you want to shave off the edges. You want to make it as tight a process as you can. You want to use only the materials that you need. You want to cost mm. cut and make savings so that you can maximize profit. Well, the, the impact of that mindset has also um, had a profound impact on us as human beings. So now we're at this place where we need to we need to accept that first of all. We need to recognize it, and then we need to make our way back. Hmm. Yeah, no, it's interesting. It's interesting stuff. I mean, creativity itself. I wonder if you have any thoughts on why, like, that is a useful thing to sort of measure, perhaps, when it comes to like, you know, because obviously you've seen a lot of um, differences there when someone does engage in their creativity. That the well-being is kind of quite closely tied to that. Um, you know, why do you think creativity is really sort of at the heart of, of some of this stuff and it seems to be quite an important thing why it matters now mm. and why it matters in work and why it matters in kids it's 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 how we create our world like i de- i define creativity i like to define it as as a life force it's an energy it's just this pure potential that is thrust into this momentum and then it produces things as a result and it's mm. it's um 
it's your natural self-expression. It's every individual on this planet. It's that energy that gets them up and gets them imagining new possibilities. It's, it's perceiving information, processing it in their mind, in their subconscious, in their heart, in their soul, in their senses, in their everything, and then creating something as a result of it, giving something back to the world um, almost in gratitude for everything that we've been given. And you think about the world that we're in now, we, everything that we use, we're using this this um, Riverside tool right now to record a product, to record a podcast. It's just, it's the outcome of someone's creativity. It's, it's an idea that then has been iterated on. It's been created, code, tested, experimented with, produced. Here we go. We get to see the benefit of that. The clothes we're wearing, the food we eat, the cars we drive, all of it is is someone's value that they've given to us, given to the world. It's all a creative process, the whole thing. And it's and and that's a very natural process. And I think where we've got lost or while we've got into this difficulty is we've we've stopped seeing it as an organic, natural process. You go to a rainforest, the whole thing is just pure creativity. It's just fertile mm-hmm. soil and then reaching for the sun and everything's working together and that takes the drops of rain and it produces this for the mushroom to send information here and it's 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 just beautiful. It's this organic, mm-hmm. you know, explosion of possibility constantly and we've taken elements of that and gone okay we just want to grow this little bit here and we want to make sure that that goes there and let's segregate that and put this in a box and move it all around it's like it doesn't work like that humans Mm -hmm. don't work like that life doesn't work like that so we've got to return to you know that more organic scent kind of creativity that that's in us that we were born with Mm. yeah definitely what do you think someone could do to say they're I mean, yeah, like we said at the start, you know, most people have kind of lost this essence, right? Uh, and it perhaps gets covered up by whether it's education or social mm-hmm. stuff or whatever whatever happens. Like how can someone start to re-engage with the part of themselves that still has this, right? Because presumably we all still, it's not lost completely. Like it's still, it's just been sort of hidden by other stuff, right? What I'm interested with you, Jimmy, what gets you mm-hmm. going? What's the thing that like lights you up? Something that you're like, oof. I love that. Yeah, I think um, one of the things I, I I I would use, I guess, to measure that is like getting in like a flow state and, and things like that. I think if you things that you can get into that state with, I would say those are things where I'm like locked in the zone. Like you look at the clock; it's been four hours. How yes. did that happen? Kind of thing. What is <laughs> it? Give that, me an example. What's the thing that gets you in that space? Honestly, like when I sit, like now and recently, like when I sit down and do programming and like. Uh, things like that it just I find I can just get stuck into a problem look at the clock and time's just flown um, mm-hmm. and it, and it's it, it's quite satisfying I feel like I can get get lost in, in that kind of stuff super easily <laughs> and that's probably like quite a nerdy thing to be <laughs> that's to be awesome enjoying. man everyone's got but their thing cool. yeah, yeah, yeah but whatever moves you because that's that's the access point that's the way back is that yeah. for anyone is to find that thing that moves them and inspires them that could be listening to old rock and roll tunes from the 50s that mm. could be going and people watching with a glass of wine in a cafe somewhere. That could be old movies, new movies, sci-fi. That could be, you know, mucking around with your kids. Anything that, that just makes you go, oh, God, life's amazing. What makes mm. you feel something? You know, we've lost our capacity to feel. And and our feelings are so, they're, they're like a neon sign for what matters to us. And they're, a, they're this beautiful super highway this gateway back to our creativity and our self-expression and Mm. we've robbed and starved and suppressed so much of our feeling that we you know we make fun of it or we we don't allow it or we say oh it's not appropriate or it's this and it's that or we don't want it we don't want to look weak or whatever Mm. it is but the feeling like being attuned to what moves us what, what makes us feel something where we just go, God, it's, it's oh, something about that. And for me personally, a lot of that is the arts. It's nature and the arts. For me, I think that they're both just so powerful as tools to affect you in a way beyond your thinking mind. They, they hit your body, they hit your emotions, mm. they hit your soul. That stuff, if, if you can surround yourself with more of that, and you don't even have to do anything, just let it affect you, let it move you, then something will come out of that. Like that's mm. the next step will present itself. I promise it's um, that's the beauty of it. You know, it's such a, it's a life giving force when it, when yeah. it comes for you. 
No, but, well, there's something special to think about, like going out in nature and going for a big walk, or or you know, looking at the stars at night, or uh, even like you said with music, like when your favorite song comes on and you're jumping around and like singing along in your room, <laughs> uh, or whatever it is. Yeah, I totally agree. You're sort of connecting to something there. Um, that That's perhaps great. gets lost definitely in the like a professional sense um you know at the office or whatever uh, mm-hmm. you know there's there's definitely you kind of lose that i feel um when it comes to that kind of really like sort of pure joy that comes in those moments um, so let can i ask you a question because you're yeah. you're relatively newish in your professional career mm. so you've come into this big big wide you know corporate vibe mm. and it's well, I mean, it's pandemic, it's different, it's interesting, it's working from home, but you love coding, you just love maths, you love all of that stuff, numbers and solving complex problems, all this stuff. Now, you've mm-hmm. got in the workplace, Has your have your expectations been met, like what you thought the workplace would be like when you were going through university or mm-hmm. high school? Has it has it been equal to what you were anticipating or are there is it different yeah. to what you're expecting? That's a good question. I think... One aspect of it was completely different, and I, like I remember thinking this. So when I was in my last year of uni, I was like super structured with how I went about studying and like doing all this stuff. So I would like, like I had this routine. It was it was so good, <laughs> and I would like definitely replicate this at some point, right? Yeah, if, if if I had more like control over my schedule. But essentially, it was like wake up around six thirty, uh, drive to uni, leave home about seven, get to uni, like or drive to uni, get out the car at about seven thirty, walk to uni arrive at about eight o'clock, do like deep focused study for like four or five hours, go to the gym on the way home. I'd be home by like two or three. And like, I just like was way ahead of all deadlines and it was just super good. Um, wow. And so that was like such a good, ex- like I just knew mm. I was like, this, this is how like, this is how mm. things should work. <laughs> and I remember I was, um, I got this internship in, uh, uh, in, in my penultimate summer. Um, and I was chatting with the the guy that was going to be my supervisor, and I was like, like I was completely oblivious at this point, never really like worked properly. And I was like, hey man, like you know, I really work best. Like I'll get in the office early, like all good. Like I really don't want to. Like I'll get in the zone in the mornings, and and then like we can have meetings and stuff in the afternoon because like you know my brain just works better then. So like all good. And then I just remember he didn't really answer. He just kind of looked at me like, <laughs> like what are you saying, mate? Like <laughs> this is like not how we do things. And like at that, at that point, I didn't really realize um, like wow. what I was kind of going into. Um, and then I was then once I got there, I was like, oh, like like I don't really have much control over what I do. Like this kind of stuff that you sort of have to mm. have to participate in and whatever, which isn't all bad, but definitely that's in so that sense, beautiful, um, man. Yeah, that's so good because there's a guy called Aaron McEwen. He's a friend of mine. He works at Gardner and he does a lot of this research globally. He works with you know mm. lots of big organisations all around the future of work and how we, you know, in HR space is a big influencer and et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And he's speaking a lot, you know, a lot these days about how the pandemic has shaped the way of work and stuff. And he speaks about how we're going through a transformation now equal to what happened when business finally woke up to the customer experience. At some point, decade or two ago, business really went, oh my goodness, what are we thinking? We can't just send out one email to 500,000 subscribers. We need to start personalizing. We need to start getting curious about what our customer wants so that we can design experiences and products that are going to better serve them. That's Mm going to ensure that our customers buy from us is if we actually start listening and give them what they want. That Mm -hmm. same, and in the beginning, that was the challenge for a lot of companies. They were like, well, I don't know if I'm up for this. But that same thing is now taking place with the employee experience where businesses are now having to realize, huh, if we don't get to know our people, if we don't actually start designing a space that they want to be in, they'll go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And it's fascinating that your first instinct um, coming out of, out of you know, uni or whatever was to say, hey, I've figured it out. I know myself really well. Mm-hmm. I know what works for me is if I get up early, I get that four hours of deep work, then I hit the gym. I mean, sure. I would normally go home, but I can stay and we can do a few meetings. I'm still going to be good, but yeah. I'm going to I'm going to be so effective for you. This is going to be great. Mm. And to have someone that's, you know, not no disrespect to them at all, but someone that's already heavily entrenched in this system to just mm. not even respond with like, oh, okay, mate, whatever. <laughs> that is not what we do here. Yeah. <laughs> but what an, yeah. like that's the opportunity where they will go, oh, my God, fantastic. So you know what works best for you? Excellent. Then let's design mm. that because because 
if we break down your employment, like at, at the core of it is we want to get the best, the maximum value we can from you. And if you've already stood forward and said, I know how you can get the best value from me, then it feels like a pretty logical step for the company to go, oh my God, thank you. You figured that out already. Well, then we'll just work with you on that because you're going to get, you know, th- that's yeah, yeah. that's the perfect equation. Mm. This is this this shift we're in right now where companies are not, most of them are not there yet, but they're, yeah. but this is the shift. It's like, hang on, we need to find a better way. And if you've figured out what way works for you to be your most creative, your most innovative, your most productive, man, if I was your boss, I'd be like, James, you do you, my friend. Here's what we need done, ideally in a couple of weeks, go nuts. Mm. It's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty cool Like uh, the, about what you said, um, you know, with the, with the email list and really customizing not only for the customers like of the of the business, but the sort of internal customers, which are like, you know, the mm-hmm. employees. Exactly. Guess, sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's super cool. Because, yeah, I think there's a lot to be, lot to be gained in that area because I think – yeah, like you said, everyone and everyone's wired differently. Like what works for me might not work for someone else, and might not work for someone else, right? Um, but if you can find a way to connect the jigsaw sort of nicely, then I think mm. um, it's really a win-win for everyone because you can work in a way that you want to work, and the business is kind of getting the most out of you as well. Um, and you know, and and I'd even say on that that your you and your tribe. I'd say the other people, maybe the listeners of this podcast that might be around a similar demographic that maybe you're also just get, beginning their careers or five, 10 years in, mm. not to put responsibility on you because you didn't ask for that and certainly don't deserve it. But I do see that there's a tremendous opportunity for you to lead mm. in that you got to get these guys and girls up the top to start to recognize, hey, we're ready. We're willing. We want to be a part of this. We got value to contribute. We we are hungry to climb mm. the ladder to do whatever. But we also know a few things about who we are, and we know what works best for us. And if you're listening, we can help you create a space that is going to make us thrive. And if that if if we can have that, then everybody wins. Mm. But they're not, you know, paying necessarily paying too much attention yet. And it's mm. um. Yeah, it's kind of like I feel almost like the whole world as well is in this a lot of people, whether it's, you know, women in particular, people of colour, anyone from from, you know, some kind of social group or that is that is seeking social justice, it's time to for people to be account or held to account. But younger people as well, it feels like this shift in power um, to be like, you know what? You're gonna have to start listening. The systems that are grinding that have brought us this far, it's not serving everyone anymore. It's only serving a select few people and we kind of had enough. It's time mm. to it's time to shift the game. And I think you where I'm going with this, James, is that you are going to lead a revolution and you are going to transform the whole world of work by Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see Christmas maybe let's make it end of financial year next year okay, I think we can do, it. I can do that <laughs> <laughs> amazing no no I think that's super cool I like what you said there because I think um, sometimes and I like how you sort of put it on me there because I think like myself and probably many others like have these ideas where it's around I'd really like to work this way or I think my workplace should do this or whatever but I think um, it is almost up to up to us to kind of drive some of those changes and, mm. and really say actually you know, if I want this to happen, then no one else is like, perhaps no one else is actually going to come or there's not going to be this, uh, something like, like a COVID or some external event, right. That's going to come and change things. So like, I don't really have to do anything. It's just kind of going to take care of itself, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I think that's, that's important as well. And this ties in so well, James, because if we don't, if you don't harness that energy, if you don't feed that energy, like there's a, there's a youthful, there's a power that comes when you're young and you're optimistic, you see the future, there's, ah, oh, if you don't invest in that, if you don't grow those seeds, they will wither and die. And then when we talk about these statistics, when people are 30 and beyond, there's only 2% left, it's because they haven't been investing in, they haven't been tending to the garden of their self-expression, of their creativity, of that furious fascination they have to make things in the world. And so it's, it's almost, it's an imperative to move the world forward, but actually it's, it's almost being responsible for your own success or your own, you know, capacity to thrive is to, is to stay hungry and to keep pushing and trying to change things and, and poke the bear 
even mm. when you, you know you, you'll definitely get a few bruises and scratches along the way but mm. it, it's kind of like you you develop more confidence and you and you learn how to position yourself better and you get you figure out how to communicate better by being on the front lines and mixing things up you doing this podcast is a perfect example of that there's a, there's mm. There's probably 506,000 people in Australia that are talking about doing a podcast right now. And 478,000 of them have been talking about it for more than three years. And you're, you're doing it. You know, you're, you're out there making it happen after work, 8 o'clock, here we are, 8.30 p.m. on a Thursday night making this happen. Mm. And it's, it's that hunger that's going to keep you young funnily enough but also keep you in the game keep you learning growing pushing and then ultimately being someone that does change the game for others so it's very it's very cool man it's important stuff Mm. no i agree i think it's yeah i I like what you said there about um you know if you don't kind of water the garden uh metaphorically then it's going to kind of sort of slowly die off and you maybe will get to a point where it's hard to like hard to sort of bring everything back to life again or maybe you didn't even forget how to water it in the first place. Um, You're right. Mm. Yeah. And then you're just sad and old and lonely and bitter. (laughs) (laughs) We don't want that. (laughs) And an executive. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, I agree. I think it's, yeah, I think it's so important. And I think, you know, part of it too is like, yeah, when you have these ideas and and things that you want to do, it's like really like acting on them is, is so important, right? Like turning the things you're thinking into reality, even if it's like, um, you know, going on a trip somewhere or like messaging that person or starting the podcast or the newsletter or whatever, uh, you know, all these kinds of things where you're, it's not just this idea that you have that's like, oh, it'd be nice to do that one day. (laughs) Yeah. But you're actually kind of really stepping into it and and doing it. I think it's, Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like a, uh, maybe even a skill perhaps to, mm. or it's just, you know, something to, uh, yeah, like you said, if you, if you don't uh, do that consistently, it's almost like a muscle. That's a better analogy. You know, if, exactly. you're, not really, if you're not really working it, then it kind of, um, it loses its, uh, loses its value perhaps. It really does. And, and, and the, t- and the world is not in our favor. Like the odds are stacked against us because the world just wants us to be consumers. It just wants us to show up to get in debt and then to work hard to pay off that debt. And then we're just good little voting consuming, you know, batteries that yeah. keep this whole machine running. But it's really, you know, without being a boohoo conspiracy theory, whatever, it's um, it's a weird, strange little world that we found ourselves in. And so keeping that hunger alive and keeping that that positive descent, you know, being someone that that is consciously and intentionally trying to disrupt things and shake the tree mm. a little bit and keep people on their toes it's just so important a mate mm. of mine he's really into you know mythical stuff and he loves the archetypes and blah 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 and he always talks about the trickster and the trickster is that well, well there's the trickster archetype but there's also the um you know like the court jester in a little bit mm. and the jester a lot of the time is the right hand person to the king or the queen. So they have, you know, the trust and they, you know, the king and the queen likes them and enjoys them and keeps them close and feeds them. and But a lot of the jokes, a lot of what they're doing, you know, they're poking fun at them gently at the same time. They're getting, all, you know, all the village people, everyone else, they're showing them, hey, listen, this thing is all made up here. This mm-hmm. thing doesn't have to be this way. You know, we, we've got to remember that we're playing we're, we're allowing this game to continue. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's a lot. I mean, I'm getting a bit deep here, but I yeah. think if we all realized how much we're allowing this mm. thing to continue, like, you know, it, we yeah. could, we could cause a whole lot of change very quickly, mm. Yeah. but it's, but they got us with convenience. You know, we want our, we want a nice, safe, clean little life. We want to watch Netflix. We want to, you know, order Uber Eats. We want the creature comforts, but mm. there's, um, yeah, we could, you know, we could change this game very quickly if we all realized, wow, hang on a second. We're all kind of playing along with this thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like take the, the red pill, uh, in the matrix. Almost, 100%. You know? What a, re- what a revolution that movie was, mm. you know, when you really think about, it, I actually remember watching that in the cinema in the, in the late nineties and, I went with a bunch of mates and we seriously walked out and went, that is going to change like 
the course of the world. That's wow. Like what a cultural, mm. it's iconic. Yeah. It just shifted your mindset immediately. But then what happened? Like we, it's almost like we became even more yeah. <laughs> in the matrix. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I think that's really cool. And yeah, what a, what a movie. And I guess it's still used in so many different like analogies like we use it then. But yeah, very cool. I think it's a, it's almost um, going back to what you were saying before. It's almost sort of a, a life or death. Like, I mean, you've really got to treat it with some level of importance, I think, you know, because it's like, I think about this a lot. Like I see, um, you know, older guys at the office or whatever, at some of the places I've worked and, and I go like, I really, really hope that I, <laughs> like, I don't end up like that, you know, uh, in, in the nicest way. Like I'm sure, I'm sure like, you know, they have their own journey and experiences and, and whatever, but uh, yeah. you know, sometimes I'm like, really like when I'm, when I'm that age, I really hope that I'm, you know, there's something about me you know, and I still have that kind of that zest and, and that creativity that's kind of, the fire, I guess, that's inside and hasn't just been been blown out. And I think, hmm. James, you're on the money. So I was I was fortunate enough. I mean, I played music out of uni and studied that and whatever else. And then I was a performer for 10, 15 years. Um, so I the influences I had were quite groovy people. They were pretty cool. Yeah. You know, there was yeah, you're hanging out. I was. 18 20 25 28 you're hanging out with 42 year olds you're hanging out with 60 year olds you're hanging out with 37 whatever different ages but everyone was pretty cool you know they were living on the edge they were outside of the square so there was that was the influence and i just saw that as what you'd grow into it was later that i ended up working in this in the in the corporate world doing the work that i'm doing now and it's it, it's been quite staggering it's like wow this is this is it this is yeah. what all the people do in these big buildings nine to five every week. This is, this is what goes on here. It, it's, it was quite a wake up call when I first ended up, you know, checking it out because mm -hmm. there's a lot of sick, unhealthy, burnt out, tired, you know, disenfranchised, lonely people. Mm -hmm. And that sounds pretty harsh and brutal, but I mean, you know, what, let's just call it what it is really. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it, is um i mean that's just that's terrifying and it's so tragic you th you, it's kind of got to go what are we doing here mm -hmm. we need to stop and and look at this and i think you're absolutely right like there is it is a little bit life and death there is there's some urgency to this mm -hmm. otherwise a decade goes by two or three four and then you're looking at your retirement and you think what the f have i done yeah I've worked a few jobs. I stayed late. I don't really know my kids. I have two houses, but so what? I never really traveled much or maybe I did, but I wasn't present because I was on my phone the whole time. Like whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, we kind of need to wake up. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, and like a lot of the folks listening are probably younger, right? But I think, you know, time does go pretty quick not like i know that's a bit of a <laughs> uh you know a bit of a saying that people just say right but i think it's like i guess before you know it it's been a year and then it's been another year and you know you kind of get into the the flow of doing the same thing at the same place and it kind of just boom and it's and you're somewhere you didn't want to be uh <laughs> you know or it's somewhere that you know uh you you thought you'd be somewhere else and i think um yeah i think it, i think it honestly is is at that point where it's you've really got to take this uh the creativity and the energy and, and really stoke the fire and keep it going otherwise mm. um yeah otherwise you'll, you'll end up somewhere that you don't want to go and um you know you'll end up somewhere that just yeah within not long <laughs> you know you're mm -hmm. somewhere that that you, you didn't really want to be 100 uh, percent. and even and even building on that i mean we've kind of talked about we started this conversation around creativity and then mm -hmm. we've looked at well this is what happens if we're not careful this is the world that we're in it can be taken from us, it can be stolen from us. It can be, you know, but if we were to switch and go, well, what happens if we do engage with it? What happens to our life? What happens to our career? If we do make the time for it, if we invest in it, if we be courageous with it, if we allow it in and we, we, you know, we uh, tend to the garden, so to speak. Mm. Oh my goodness. The opportunities, James, you know, the joy, the connections, the magic, I, I, even in my own, speaking through my own experience, my own life, creativity has served me more than anything else. When the chips are down and, and life is difficult and you've got two bucks to rub together and there's not, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. What do you draw on? Creativity. When things are going well, you know, and, and it's like, how can we make this even better? How can we, 
how can we bring even more to this and grow and blah, 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 blah. It's creativity. Mm. How can I position myself ahead of potential competitors or other colleagues or candidates or how can I get that gig? How can I get that promotion? You've got to think outside the box. And I think that one of the best things that, that being creative or staying creative can do for you in your career is that it makes the journey so much more fun. It's less about this destination. You're not, you're not as fixated on I need to get to X, which I think is a big part of why maybe in this old model and a lot of, a lot of people that are older now are struggling a bit because they had this they had their eye on the prize that if they arrived at this particular place, everything would be better. But they sacrificed a lot to get there. And I think if you, anch- you can anchor yourself in that playful, creative, curious, courageous space or state where you're just in the game for the sake mm. of the game, you're having fun, you're doing a podcast, you know, you're trying this at work, you know, I'm going to get up and do this and I'm going to put on an event at work. I've never put on an event before. I don't care. I'm going to try it. I don't care if three people show up. Let's do it. Mm. You know, the next time 30 people show up, you're like, whoa, that's crazy. How did that happen? Then 300 people show up. You're like, this is insane. Now I've got a career. Like it's mm. just a, you know, but if you do that, it's it's almost like if you take one step towards, you know, the world in that way, it takes six towards you. It's like, ah, yeah. oh, right on. You're here to play. Well, then we will yeah. give you everything you need to make the kind of magic that you're hoping to make. Mm. And I've just seen it time and time again. I mean, my own life is an example of that, but the people that I aspire to be more like, the people that inspire me, they're just, they just surrender and trust and lose themselves in that creative, in that flow state, not just in the particular time of day when they just, they're in it Yeah, yeah. from when they wake up to when they go to bed, they're just like, what do you got for me today? Universe, let's go. Mm. And it's such a departure <laughs> from, well, I've got to get there at nine because I've got a zoom session with uh, yeah. Tony and then I've got, you know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah, it's difficult. Kind of- like they're two completely different worlds, but but I think we've got to swing the pendulum back the other way. Mm, no, absolutely. And like like you said, I think part of the, I feel like part of the reason why it's it does kind of open the doors up, like you said, and like six steps towards you as you're trying to start mm. doing some of this stuff. I think because like I feel like having this the fire inside and the energy is just so rare that is when someone does have it, they're just almost like a bit of a magnet, right? It's like people want yes. to be around someone that's after it and they're, um, you know, they're just bringing light to conversations and meetings and they're the person that's, you know, does the meeting in a fun way and it's like super yes. interesting and fun uh, and it's like, wow, I, I want some more of that. And so I think that's a big part of it too, right, is, is when, yeah. you can, when you can engage that part, it's, um, you know, <laughs> it's fun for oh. everyone else as well. Well, it's beautiful, man, and, and it's such a, such a, a, a really – beautiful way of framing it like the difference that you can make to those around you by just being that guy or being that girl where you Mm. or that person where you just you just it's fun to be around you that doesn't mean you have to make jokes all the time and you have to be gregarious and outgoing and extroverted but it's just like man it's cool being around you Mm. I like being on a project with you I like having you in my team or I wish I was in your team or Mm. I want you to be in my team whatever it is because they're just, you know, you're cool. And I think that that's going to that's gonna be more and more the case moving forward is that we don't have time for that person that is on a one-way ticket to like, I'm going to get where I get and you can get, you know, elbows mm-hmm. out and look at me, I'm awesome, I've got 50,000 followers on my LinkedIn, whatever, who cares? Mm-hmm. We're like, I want to hang out with the person that makes me feel good about who I am. Mm. And someone that that wants to play together, and wants to share, and wants you know me to contribute, and wants to, hey, let's just go and do something cool together. Yeah, what a great idea! Yeah. That's exactly what I want to do with my life. And that mm. person, I think, is going to be, I think they're going to have a real advantage in the workplace because mm. um, it's kind of like, you know, it's weird, and I don't know if it's it's a bit daggy to say, but if you're picking teams. Like in a, in high school, you know, who are you going <laughs> to yeah. pick? You're going to pick the people that make you feel good. Yeah, you mm. might uh, kind of wish that you've got the skills and stuff like that, but I don't know. We can learn the skills, mm. but if you're a dude, you're in. If you're not, <laughs> you're not. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, you know? no, no, absolutely. I think I think that's a good point. I think it's um, yeah, it's it's uh, certainly real, like yeah, it's going to be beneficial for everyone, and like you can bring so much joy to everyone's life when you're when you are like that. Um, I think it's like it's it's so important that yeah <laughs> that we kind of keep that because um, it's it's you know it's almost a superpower to be mm-hmm. connected to that energy. I think, and and like you said, I think it's it's kind of there's almost a bit of a trade-off I feel where it's kind of like perhaps on the one hand you do want to be going after it in some sense so you maybe Mm -hmm. don't want to completely lose that but also you want to do it in a way that it's it's fun and you're still kind of enjoying the ride so I Mm -hmm. think um and that's maybe a hard thing at times to to balance perhaps Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that like you know if you're still just kind of like if you are like I really want to be at this position or whatever, but it's doing it in a way that's still, you know, we're still the creativity and the fun and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff is kind of still there as well. Yeah. I think it's just being, being aware of the people around you and their, their situations, their, their aspirations, you know, what, what works for them. It's, it's kind of just a courteous, thoughtful, considerate approach. You can still be hungry. Like if you metaphorically speaking, you want to win some medal, you want to be, grand finalists, you want to take home the premiership, whatever it is, you mm. can get up at 4am and train all you want. You can be an asshole when you come to training or you mm. can be a dude, but you can still push hard. You can mm. run and you can sweat and you can be in the gym longer than everyone else, but you don't have to be a bastard, you know, like a prick about it, mm. forgive my language. Mm. You know, you can still be cool and um, you can still push people and hold people to account without being mean. You know what I mean? Or without without making people feel less than or shaming them or or isolating them. Like it, it's it's this inclusive, which again is very creative. Like creativity is all about collaboration and inclusivity and and generous and generative. Like it's using whatever's around you. It's not judging, going, eh, not that, not you. It's like, hey, yeah, you come on, let's do this together, whatever it is. Mm. Let's use that and build with that and put this here and off we go. You know, so it's, um, yeah, man, you know, <laughs> peace, love and happiness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, I, I think that's really cool. I mean, what if you, you give a lot of talks and, and like run heaps of stuff around like bringing creativity back into the workplace? I mean, mm-hmm. what have you, like if someone is listening and they feel like they've, they've perhaps lost that, Mm-hmm. Is there any like, tips or, or things you would say to them to help them kind of perhaps get out of that rut or kind of re-engage with that? Yeah. Again, I just say get back to the things that you connect with that inspire you. It could be watching movies. It could be um, listening to music. It could be going to events. Like you've got to seek out what inspires you and then let it affect you. Mm-hmm. Like it's if if what's going in is – is directly related to what comes out. And if you're not mm. feeling inspired, you're not feeling creative, you're not feeling like you know, you're not having these ideas and coming to you and I don't really know who I am or what I want or et cetera, et cetera, go and find it, like get hungry for it. Mm. And even if it's uncomfortable, even if you, you don't like going to live events, figure out a way, like mm. just get, excuse me, get curious. And because um, it's not going to like, you've got, you've just got to show a little bit it's not going to come to you if you're sitting at home. You know, it's not going to come to you if you're going to the same places, talking to the same people, listening to the same stuff, whatever it is. You've just got to, if you just like that one little step hmm. closer, uh, it'll come. And and as simply as, you know, we discussed before, art, fiction, read a novel instead of a business magazine. Like read, hmm. read things that will uh, are designed to ignite your imagination. And then you just let your subconscious do the heavy lifting because a lot of the time you just fill your brain with beautiful stuff, fill your brain with interesting people, go to a cool event, go to the theater, man. I'm a big musical buff. I'm, you know, I love it. Go and see Mm. the theater. The theater affects you in a way because we just don't do it enough. And that's what we've done for thousands of years. We've gone and seen other humans tell stories live on stage. And Mm. when you do that, everybody comes out different. They're like, oh yeah, wow. I forgot how much I like that stuff. 
Honestly, they, they really do. You can take, you know, a tradie there. You can take an engineer there. You can take a mathematician or a dev or whoever. Oh, I'm not really into, you know, theatre much. Rah, rah, and they sit through a show and they go, Jesus, yeah, I haven't really thought about it like that before. Mm. You know, this is, wow, it's made me think about what I'm doing with my life. And maybe rah, rah. That's, the, that's the whole design of it. Mm. It's, that's, it's, that's the whole purpose and intent. Yeah. <laughs> of mm. art is to get you to think differently and open you up and, and connect ideas for you. So get hungry for it. Go and see some, go see mm. something cool, you know, that, that affects you. Yeah. And then it just, it, it'll come. It, I promise you it's, it's that it's <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like it, you can sit there and strategize, um, okay, what's the best way that I can design my um, lifting routine in the gym? Like how can I, Okay, I'm going to do push on Monday. I'm going to do pull routine on Tuesday. I'm going to do my legs on Wednesday. I'm going to and I'm going to have my macros. You can spend hours on all that, or you could just go do some push ups. Mm. And then, like three minutes later, you've just you've done a hundred push ups. Mm. It's just it's there. You could we can overthink this. We can overcook it. We can try to figure out something, or you could just go and listen to some music. Go find some art. Go go mm. to somewhere that is creative. And let it just kind of wash all over you as a starting mm. point. And it will, it, it, it just kind of like, yeah, we don't need to make it any more complicated than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's powerful. Yeah. It's a powerful thing. Like we don't need to figure it out. We just need to let it in. Mm. Yeah, no, I think it's spot on there. I think even like what you were saying earlier was around like, if you just take one step in this direction and get one, <laughs> you know, go like, go to something like that, read a book. Yeah. Try something a bit different, what's outside of perhaps the routine. Because I think that's that can maybe be something that um can perhaps be negative uh after a while is like the habits and routines and these kinds of things. Like while they perhaps are beneficial in some ways, if it's like, oh you're trying to build a habit of reading or like build a habit of going to the gym, okay, that's great. But I feel like, you know, at some point too they become it's like a, it can become a negative as well. It can be, can be something that perhaps you depend on or it's leading you into sort of somewhere that's a bit stale and it's not really, you know, giving you that the fun and the energy um, mm. anymore. And so then it's worth looking at and engaging and, you know, bringing, bringing it back, like switching it up, doing something completely different. Like you said, um, you know, trying it in a different way, things like that. And I think it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm really interested now to kind of go, go and look at the things in my life and see how I can you know, flip them around or do it in this particular way or try something crazy that, I, you know, <laughs> that may or may not work, but just to give it a go. Do you know what mm. I mean? Um, I think that's, I think that's really cool. Mm. Awesome. You're awesome, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, man. Well, we've got like probably 10 minutes to go and there's right. one, there's a few things I, I really wanted to ask. Um, so perhaps we'll just fill the remainder with this yeah, some, some questions, <laughs> perhaps a little bit more, uh, more uh, tangible perhaps than, than right. some of all the things we've been speaking about, which I think are also really important. But one of the things was around uh, public speaking and, mm -hmm. and sort of presentations and stuff because I know that you are really, really, really good at this and you've won lots of awards and things for for the things that you do in this area. Mm. But I wonder, has it been something that you've tried to improve mm -hmm. uh, consciously? And if so, like, we can kind of, where did you start on your journey with all this and how have you kind of evolved and what kind of learnings, I guess, have you learned along the way? Mm -hmm. I'd say um, for anyone that's got to present, that's another skill that we're all going to have to have, you know, and particularly if you want to move up the ranks in whatever business, being able to communicate effectively being able to influence from a stage, presentation, pitch, whatever it is, marketing, sales, even getting buy-in for your ideas, being able to communicate effectively to, to a group of people or a large room of people is a pretty crucial tool. But honestly, m like we can get into the nuance of it. Again, I'm, this is probably an oversimplified answer. It's time on the court. The more you do it, the better you'll get. There are ways to elevate, like a, to accelerate Maybe, you know, you go deep into storytelling or you think about posture and breathing and you can, the tonality of your voice and da 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 da, da. There's, a, there's a whole range of things to like, you know, get become more high performance. But in the mm. beginning, you just got to do it a lot. Again, mm. it's me, you know, I'm going back to this, just do some push-ups. Just go look at, listen mm. to some creativity or be around a creative space. Go for a walk in Fitzroy. 
you know, Collingwood, just be around at Cremorne. It's all funky and cool now. You know what I mean? Mm. Similarly, with public speaking, take opportunities, find opportunities, create opportunities to speak in front of people. Get terrified. Throw up before it if you have to. Freak out about it for three weeks. Write 17,000 words for a two-minute talk and delete it all and start again and stress about it. Go through that process as much and as often as you can Mm -hmm. because you will learn more than, again, strategizing or thinking or looking for the three top tips or the six practical hacks. Mm -hmm. It's it's This is, I think, speaks to, again, you know, kind of in line with this whole conversation we've had today, Mm -hmm. the old... There's a way of looking at the world, which is how do I get there by doing X, Y, Z? Yeah, cool. Or just do it. Mm. Just get in the game. Just play. And even if you you will learn more in one presentation, one keynote, one speech, than you will in 50 practice runs. Mm. Like the moment you step up on stage, you're, you're just bang, you're in the learning and you're freaking out and you said something good and then you see someone in the audience and they look at you a particular way and you're like, oh, my God, I suck. I've got to get off the stage. It's horrible. <laughs> ah. You know, mm. and all of this is going on, but you're learning in that. You're learning, 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 learning. Mm. And then you get off and some, you go, oh, my God, kill me. That was the worst thing that ever happened. Someone comes up to you and goes, that was amazing, James. Thanks so much. I love the way you did that. And you're like, what the hell was I at the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is, it's, and you've got to go through that process. Mm. And then you do it again. And then you get off one and you go, I nailed that. Like, I absolutely nailed it. And someone comes up and goes, hey, man, that really wasn't very good. And you're like, oh, my God, what is, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anymore, you know. Mm. I just, it's mm. just one of those things that, that just do it. Do it as much yeah. as you can, as often as you can. And it starts as it, simple as putting your hand up in a meeting or unmuting yourself on a Zoom call or a Teams call. You know, it's mm. so easy nowadays just to, has anyone got any questions? Tumbleweed. Mm. You know, oh, I'll wait for them to ask. Oh, I'll wait for them to speak. I'll wait. They're the, normally the ones that do it. Oh, no, it's Tony. He's the rah, rah, rah. They're getting all the benefit. If you don't jump in, you're, you know, they're learning and they're growing in their craft of being comfortable mm. and confident speaking. So it's mm. it's kind of like, hey, I want to go too. And see that sometimes, like I, I try to get people to raise your hand before you've got a question. You know, people say, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, just raise your hand mm. and go, oh, shit. And then they go, oh, Michael, would you? Um, yeah, and you surprise yourself. <laughs> you will come up with something. Mm. Like people do. That's what we do. We're so much more gifted and talented and creative and spontaneous than we give ourselves credit for. We just mm. don't put ourselves in the mix enough. Mm. You know, we hold back and we now we've got screens and mute buttons, which we can hide behind even more. Mm. You know, when it used to be at least rooms where we were in the same room together, you kind of look around and, you know, you'd look down at the table and try to avoid eye contact to not get picked on. Now we can just... Un- take our, you know, screen down or whatever. Yeah. Take turn our camera off, and we can just hide. Mm. Mm. And it's like, well, you won't get any benefit from that. You won't grow through that. So this is, I think, there's probably never been a better time to learn and grow how to speak in front of people in this kind of weird hybrid zoomy world, because yeah. you can just you can just put your hand up, like just join in, contribute. And then does anyone want to lead this? Who wants to share? I will, bugger it. You're at a conference Mm -hmm. and you're in a breakout table. Everyone's like, oh, who's going to be the one that report? I will, unless someone else wants to. And you can even say, look, I will, I don't want to, but I want to get better at public speaking. So I'd love to have a go at it, even though I really don't want to have a go at it. You say that and everyone on the table goes, oh, awesome. Go, James. (laughs) Yeah, we're behind you. Sure, I wish I had the courage to do that. And you could yeah. say, hey, well, I'll, maybe I'll do the first one, you do the second one then. And then everyone can mm. grow and learn together, mm. you know, rather than, oh, Tracy, she always, I'll just, let's just let Tracy speak. Mm. And we, we let ourselves off the hook. But, but yeah, there's, there's loads of stuff. There are so many things that you can do to really refine your public speaking and become, you know, you can bring all kinds of magic down the track. But to begin mm. with, like a starting point, I really think just do it often all the time. And these are things that I learned from my music career. A lot of the time, you know, there's practicing at home, there's doing scales, there's arpeggios, there's, you know, listening to tunes, transcribing, working it out. 
but a lot of all of the guys that I looked up to that that kind of helped me guided me on my way they'd say just book a gig man Hmm. just get a gig you'll learn more on a gig just book as many gigs as you can try and do as many gigs play to no one play on the street busk play Hmm. in a shopping center where no one's listening to you play wherever you can because you will just you'll learn so much quicker by being in the game yeah so that's my that's my <laughs> speech. No, that's really cool. I think yeah. it's yeah, like the I like the way yeah, you sort of uh, landed that into the creativity. You've got to be in the game as well, right? Hundred percent. So it's a similar thing. Uh, you're going to best grow your and uh, and water the garden of creativity. That's right. <laughs> you know, James. if you're in there and you're playing the game and you're and you're testing things out, so I think that's super cool. You're tying it all together, my friend. Yeah. Like <laughs> Amazing. Well, yeah, I've got a uh, last question for you, Michael. Uh, it's something that I ask all the guests. And, you know, graduate theory, it's sort of, uh, you know, we're about young people that are sort of perhaps around my age, early career, perhaps at university. I wonder if there's any advice that you would hand it to people that are at this stage uh, kind of looking to grow their career and, and ideally be in the sort of 2% that are... Mm-hmm still the creative genius uh, Mm -hmm. when they're a bit older you can't you've got you can't let the world get to you you are going to be met with i hope it's changing i really do i think it is i think it's changing but probably still the next maybe 10 years might be a bit bumpy we're we're trying to figure it out you are going to have people that are mean you're going to have people that talk about you behind your back you're going to have people that actively try to you know withhold information from you or stunt your career or do all these kind of things. Don't let them stop you. You know, like you've got to, you've got to trust yourself, love yourself. You've got to accept that you came here for a reason and it's not better or smaller or grander or lesser than anyone else's. If you're here, you're meant to be here and you have a voice and you have something you're supposed to contribute to this planet. And that could be your neighbors, that could be your family, that could be, you know, the colleagues, customers, whatever. You could be another Steve Jobs. You could be another Barry who lives in the suburbs who's just a radical dude who says g'day Mm -hmm. to the postie every day. It doesn't matter. You're here for a reason. Mm -hmm. And you just cannot let the world diminish you and make you feel less than how, how much of a miracle you are. And this might sound like a little bit, you know, Tony Robbins, motivational speaking but we need that right now we've been told we're not enough we've been told that we're not going to make it that we aren't this that we're not as good as them that we're no 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 you open up instagram it's just everyone's better than you skinnier than you got more money than you blah 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 it's horrible and it's all bullshit because all those people are worried and terrified and you know insecure and rah 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 rah, rah. Mm. you've just like my advice would be find people that you can trust and rely on and just hold this little unit of of kind of safety and sacredness where you value each other, you support one another, you remind each other, hey, we're awesome. Because the next world, the world that you'll all be building, is it's going to be better than the one that I inherited. And the one I inherited was better than the one my parents did. And the one that, the, you know, we, we're getting better. We're on this journey. Mm-hmm. But it's it, it can knock you around, man. It can knock you around. And it can, it's, you know, whether people mean to or not, whatever you, everyone that's listening to this right now, and you included James are extraordinary. You've got just so many beautiful, astonishing things to give to this world. We don't even know what they are yet. That's the magic of it. It's like, wow, who knows what James is going to do in five years time or 10 years or 20 years. But if you start to believe a little story in your head, that maybe James doesn't have something special to give, then you're not going to launch that next project. And then we don't get the benefit of that. And that's and this is the same as true, which I try to tell as many people as possible when I'm doing a keynote or a session, a leadership program, et cetera, et cetera. Look, guys, I really encourage you to share generously because I can talk at you for two hours, three weeks, nine months. I can blah, 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 blah. Hey, I hope that you get some value from that. Let's, let's hope that there's a little bit of insight in there. But the real value is going to come from you all sharing your story, your experience, your perspective, how you see and perceive the world. You have no idea that the question you ask or the story you share or the insight that you, you know, that came to you 
that could be the thing that unlocks something for someone else. And the whole reason they came to this event or this keynote or this program or whatever was to hear you say that thing, not to hear me say it. It's to you. And so if you don't lean in, if you don't share, because you don't think, oh, I don't, oh, my question's not good enough, or oh, I'm not as talented as the others, or oh, then you're robbing that person of having what they need. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. you're, you're stopping them from getting the magic that they need to set their life on fire. We're all connected. And it's so insidious and it's so terrifying when we start to believe that we're not enough or that we don't have something amazing to contribute. And that amazing thing to contribute could literally be, hey, I'm not sure I understand what's going on. You put your hand up and ask that question. Fantastic. There's probably 17 other people that are thinking that but are too afraid to ask it. And you've just got, oh, God, thanks so much for asking that. That was awesome, amazing. That's, this is what we, we want a world like that and where we're just generous and we're in it together and we're just we're all being ourselves and sharing ourselves as much as possible. And that, and that kind of place, man, that's the world I want to, I want to live in and it's coming. So, so hang in there team. I'm with you. You know what I mean? We're in this together. <laughs> Amazing. Mate, that was, that was really fantastic. Thanks so much for the kind words. And uh, yeah, I think that was some serious wisdom there um, <laughs> and really inspiring too. So I think I'll be coming back to, to listen to that <laughs> like many, many times. Oh, you're great. Um, <laughs> appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Michael. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on and, and hear your thoughts and, and get your wisdom. Um, but for folks listening, I wonder if there's any places that you'd like to point them uh, where they can find it out about more about you. Yeah, we, I mean, website, michaeldixon.com, M-Y-K-E-L-D-I-X-O-N.com. I'm firing up the LinkedIn and the Instagram lately because partly because it's so terrible on there <laughs> you know like we need more light and joy and not this i don't know we need more alternative voices out there on in the mix so i'm kind of mm. bringing that back with a bit of vengeance which is hopefully fun yeah um, <laughs> I'm yeah sure. come and say hi Thanks for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you want to get my takeaways, the things that I learned from this episode, please go to graduatetheory.com slash subscribe where you can get my takeaways and all the information about each episode straight to your inbox. Thanks so much for listening again today and we're looking forward to seeing you next week.